Um, this is some, somehow, I think, where all of you, and I'm sure, share a frustration, is that when you talk about Vietnam, a lot of people say, well, Vietnam now is so much better. You go to Vietnam, the churches are open, people are going to pagodas. You can see religious freedom. What are you talking about? Repression. But on the one hand, you have this you. facade of religious tolerance, but underneath, you have this repression on an everyday scale against all religious communities. So we're very, very happy to have a panel of experts here today. Uh, some are direct victims of religious repression themselves, others are experts who've studied the question for many years. And so we're going to hear their different stories. Uh, we'd like to begin today. The first speaker is Mr. Vautanyak, who is um, Secretary, Executive Secretary of the Vietnam Committee on Human Rights. He's going to be talking about uh, non-recognized religions, and specifically the Unified Buddhist Church of Vietnam. Uh, Bo Tran Nhat is somebody who's been working on Vietnam for several years. He speaks regularly at the United Nations. He's published and authored reports on uh, uh, legal questions and um, prison conditions. And he has a master's degree in public law and a postgraduate diploma at the European Law School in Paris. So I begin, first of all, with Bo Chan Nhat. only if the government accepts your request. In, in the end, the, the government decides if you can practice your religion or not. This does not comply with international law, but this is, this is, this is a Communist Party's policy and, and it has always has been. On the contrary, the Unified Buddhist Church of Vietnam, or UBCV, advocates that everyone is entitled to enjoy religious freedom and all other human rights without interference from the government. Buddhism came to Vietnam over, over 2,000 years ago, and the majority of the Vietnamese are Buddhist. Vietnam has two main streams of Buddhism, Theravada and Mahayana, but the Mahayana school is predominant. Mahayana focuses on saving all society and has shaped the Vietnamese Buddhism into an engaged Buddhism. In Vietnamese history, each time oppression threatened from inside or from outside the country, freedom of and social justice, Vietnamese monks and nuns mobilized against it, then returned peacefully in the pagodas. That's why we can consider Buddhism as a matrix for the Vietnamese nation. Thanks to this engaged Buddhism, Viet people around the Red River Delta escaped assimilation to China despite 1,000 years of Chinese occupation. From the French colonial period up to the early 60s, Buddhism was not entitled to function as a church in its own right, but was limited to status of a mere association under, under colonial decree number 10. Buddhists were only able to officially establish a church in, in 1964 after the abrogation of this decree and it be became the Unified Buddhist Church of Vietnam. In 1975, at the, after the end of the Vietnam War, Vietnam was reunited, reunified under the Communist Party and Hanoi's leaders tried to dismantle all religion, especially Buddhism which they considered, and they still consider, a threat to the power. They confiscated UBC properties, burned religious books, arrested monks, nuns, and lay Buddhists, or forced them to, to join the army. Prominent dignitary Tien Mien 
was tortured to death, Jitwing Kwang and Jit Kwang Do was placed, was placed in solitary confinement. But this terrible repression failed, failed to destroy the UBCV. The communist regime realized that it could not eradicate religions, so it plans to control it, to control them. In 1981, the Communist Party created a state-sponsored church, the Vietnam Buddhist Sangha, which became the only Buddhist association recognized by the, gov by the government. All Buddhists were, were pressed to join it, and later the same plan was used to fabricate other state churches for the other, other religions. The main architect of that plan Communist official Do Tung Hill explained later that the creation of the state church was not a Buddhist project, but the work of the Communist Party alone, and its aim was to transform Vietnamese Buddhism into a tool of the Communist Party. Indeed, among all the Buddhists who founded the state church, there was no official representative of the UBCV. The, the party even forged a fast UBCV and pretended that the UBCV was part of the state Buddhist church. This organization is truly a political tool. State, official, state church officials are members of the Communist Party, and some, of, some monks and nuns of, of, are even members of the National Assembly, in contradiction with the Buddhist uh, monastic world. Of course, UBCV leaders and followers refused to accept this ban of the church and kept up the activity despite repression. Tit Kwangdo continued to publicly speak out for the religious and human rights, and in 2005 he set up a network of representative boards to conduct educational, spiritual, and humanitarian programs for people in the poor country, in the poor provinces. As Hanoi never succeeded in suppressing UBCV, the party has launched a new religious policy. Hanoi then tolerates wider freedom of worship, but does not tolerate religious freedom. That means state pagodas can organize ceremonies, but cannot make true religious teachings, nor preach on subjects not in line with the Communist Party's directives. The policy is marked. It gives the impression that Buddhists are free to practice their religion. But without true Buddhist teaching, this practice is only empty shell. As a result, religious practices become more and more like superstition. And for people do not understand religion and ceremony and right anymore. At the same time, the, the government has sent security police to infiltrate false monks in Pagoda, into Pagoda, at least 3,000 of them. They are policemen and watch everything from inside. Moreover, they adopt an improper behavior, trying to ruin the prestige of monks among the population. Nowadays, religious persecution against Buddhism is less visible in Vietnam. That's right. But it's still terrible. In fact, Vietnamese authorities use what we call stealth repression. Buddhists are not put on, on trial or detained on the official prison anymore, but suffer harsh harassment on a daily basis. They are denied to the right to travel, routinely summoned to for police interrogation, subjected to intimidation, public denunciation sessions, and expulsion from the pagoda. Police are served to assault them and vandalize, vandalize the property. To punish UBCV followers, local authorities <laughs> refuse to de deliver them monetary within permits expel Buddhist child from school and, or make people lose their job. In many UBCV pagodas in Vietnam, celebration of Buddhist festivals are prohibited. In this perspective, the current situation, the current patriarch of the UBCV, Thi Quang Do, who is now 88 years old, is a symbol. He has been detained for more than 30 years because during his whole life he has, he has advocated peacefully religious freedom and human rights. He has been detained in various forms and is now under heart arrest in Shaibong. He is deprived 
of his citizenship rights and, and unable to travel or communi communicate freely. Sometimes the authority allows diplomats to visit him. And very recently, Western diplomats told us of the record that the authority had informed them that Taekwondo was forbidden to preach because it belonged to a non-recognized region. The Buddhist youth movement is also victim of persecution. This organization is affiliated to the UBCV and has a membership of over 300,000 young Buddhists in Vietnam. Since 2014, over 100 members have been placed under house arrest. His, his head, Le Kong Kao, is subjected to continued harassment, threat, and police interrogation. In May, for example, during the visit in Vietnam of President Obama, police detained him, detained Le Kong Kao at home, and to prevent him from visiting Tikwang Do in Shailong. I would like to conclude with the following observation. Repression against UBCV is unlikely to end. The UBCV is a strong popular movement, and Tikwang Do says that there can be no religious freedom without human rights and democracy. However, the one state party does not tolerate dissent, and Hanoi has stated clearly that it will never legalize the UBCV if Tikwang Do remains at its head. The future law on religion uh, and belief has been conceived to enforce state control on religion and will be used by the Communist Party to reinforce its power. Indeed, Vietnam's aim is not to implement the rule of law, but the rule by law. By adopting a series of law, restricting the exercise of human rights and legalizing arbitrary repression, the law on religion and belief is one of them. Moreover, this law is a trap for religion. Non-registered organizations are not allowed to practice religion. And there is no religious freedom for them. Religious groups who, which agree to, to be registered have to accept the total control of the Communist Party over the organization, the activity, the, the content of the teaching, the leadership and membership. There is no religious freedom for them either. In the end, applying for registration means renouncing the right to, to religious freedom. That's why the Supreme Patriot of the UBCV, Tikwang Do, has, has made it very clear that the UBCV will never apply for registration for as long as it remains at its head. Thank you for your attention.